All right, Small World Lifters, I'm here with Louis Simmons, Westside Barbell, Specialist Strength Coach. Bands and stretching, to the, when the band stretches, not tears, but how often do you replace bands? We don't have to replace bands very often. Our bands are strong. We just replaced it. They've probably been on there for a year. We just come back, we took the model lift out, so then we, we did, we replaced the bands. They stay, they last a long time. Okay. As long as you don't put them over a sharp surface. So you like to get the percentages right for the bar and the bands? Has to be. Uh, it's so, all so what is the effects of too much bar weight compared to the effects of too much band weight? Well, when we do speed work, all right, the 780 qualified weightlifters in the test on 50% of their trains weigh 75 and 85 percent. So if we use barbell weight, it's 75 and 85 percent in three week weight, maybe 75, 80 the next, 85 the next. All right, we use almost always bands. So we use 50%, 55, 60 with 25% band strength. That's for speed strength. All right, where we accelerate with the bar. When we do circa max, the band tension is in the high 40s, the high 40s down to the high 30s. And uh, like an 800 pound squatter, if he does, uh, we, we had one do 470 bar weight, and he did 375 with bands, and he squatted, a, uh, he was squatted over 800. I, uh, our last guy, our 165, just broke the world record squat. He squatted 890 at 164. He made 535 and 375 pound of band. That comes up to 910. He squatted 890 each for a world record. And in one year, he went up 90 pounds in one year coming here. And he went 200 pounds on his total from 1880 to 2080 by using the correct amount of bands. Right. Uh, uh, and if you want to become very, very strong, strength speed. We do two, two strength speed workouts a year, two circa max because we go to two meets. All right, the strength speed, the large guys, the guy just walked through here is 1140 squatter. He's used 700 pound of band and he made 460. So that's 1160 and he squatted 1150, I think, 1140. I had uh, uh, AJ Roberts from originally from England. Um, I'll give you two examples. Uh, in a strength phase, he did 700 pound of band and 510 pound of weight. At the, at, at the top, it's 1210. Circa Max, he did 740 bar weight, 440 band, that's 1180. And that and that meet that we trained for, he squatted 1205. That's how close this works. Okay. So I've got 83 examples of over 800 pounds to go by. Right. Uh, would too much bands be more fatiguing than too much it slows bars? Down. Okay. It, it builds more strength than speed. Okay. Um, you use ankle weights for jumps. Would you use wrist weights for tricep extensions to train the elbow tissues? We actually, a lot, Greg Panora set several world records in the 242s. Uh, he actually benched with 10 pound uh, ankle weights on his wrist. All of his bench training was with 10 pound ankle weights. All right. Um, does leg stance matter for box jumps? Does like what? Leg stance. Uh, we like wide, you know, um, and like, we use kettlebells up to very heavy. Uh, uh, ankle weights and weight vests, and sometimes all three. Mm -hmm. so we change the combination all the time. And do 40 jumps twice a week. Most, a lot of my power lifters do not do very many jumps. But uh, if you, the girls you saw are top sprinters in this country. They do lots of jumps. So, uh, how, what about for good mornings, leg starts? Uh, good mornings, pretty much. Uh, we use close stance and wide stance, bent leg and, and straight leg, arch back, back. and bent back. We uh, change it all the time. Right. And go heavy. Heavy five, heavy three. So more records to go on as well? Yes. Uh, you've done both two hour and 24 hour weigh-ins. Yes. What do you prefer and what do you think is more reliable for the sport? Well, unfortunately, I, uh, I did two hour weigh-ins many, many, for many years in the USPF, you know, uh, and a lot of people passed out. Mm -hmm. And I believe the 24 hour weigh-in is fair and it's safer. I okay. like safe, you know. Yep. We're not making any money here. Uh, too many people passed out, got hurt, got dehydrated, tore muscles. I don't have a bicep because of it. Yep. And uh, so I think 24 hour weigh-in is good. That's what fighters use. The reason fighters went through that type of weigh-in because they had dehydration in the brain. Mm -hmm. And they were causing too many brain injuries when they get hit, so they went to longer weigh-ins. Uh, which brings me on to cutting weight for west side lifters. How often do you do it and how do you know what weight class is optimal for each lifter? Well, our lifters are chosen. Um, and uh, like Jason Coker just competed 181. He came down to 209 pounds to 181. He actually weighed 180. So he actually ended up losing 29 pounds. He actually lost more than he should have. 
Um, so, it's a lot of guys can lose a lot of weight and other guys can't. I wasn't good at losing weight. I walked around under my weight class for years. Mm -hmm. I weighed 233 when I was at 242, and I was 217 when I was at 220. Just walk in and weigh that. Okay. Uh, breaking mental barriers. So, if someone gets stuck on, say, three plates on the squat, uh, and they want to at least do. Well, what, what do they have to do to get through that, just like the image of it? Well, that's why we use the conjugate system. We do all these records with different kind of bands. Like you deadlifted with the bands this morning. Yep. We, we don't do any regular deadlifting with just weight. Right. This fellow you're looking at right here is an 875 pound deadlift a couple years ago. And uh, his deadlift is in the rack with bands, plates on mats. He stands on mats. He never did a regular deadlift. And we've had 24 people over 800. Yeah. Three kilos, 362 and a half. Mm -hmm. And four over 900. So when when you do, since you don't pull from the floor often, how are you training that initial pull? Like we push? also stand on boxes. Yep. All right. Right before a contest, my last guy, he weighed 193. He put the bar on the plates. The plates are on the plates are on two inch mat, two inches off the ground. He worked up to 665, and that means he pulled 7.5 deadlift. Right. 193. That's how we do it. What, and why do we do that? When we take the place the weights off the ground, it takes away your leg drive initially. Uh, you saw the real tall guy that was in here a moment ago, real tall, the tattoos. Yep. Six, seven. He just pulled 855 that last weekend. Jake Norman? Jake Norman. He just pulled 855 last weekend at 271. All right. He, uh, he, uh, he is, um, when he pulled 900 in a meet, he could only pull 810 with plates four inches off the ground. We took his leg drive out and made him use his back more and do it to meet he pulled 900. Right. So a, a four inch longer range of motion, he actually pulled 91 pounds because we took his, 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 his strength out the leg drive and we made his back, we overloaded his back. We tried to do that. Whatever muscle group doesn't work, we make work. So you like to do a lot of shrugs for the back? We do tons of shrugs, yeah. Do you, uh, do you use bands with shrugs? Well, sometimes. But we like barbell shrugs in a power rack. Wheel barbell barrel. shrugs. And a lot of world, I don't know if you anybody do that. A lot of world barrel shrugs, a lot of shrugs, a lot of shrugs behind the back, regular shrug, you know, dumbbell shrug, barbell shrug. Uh, so how do you s cycle or rotate uh, upper back or lower back exercises? Uh, we push them as hard as you can, so you have to uh, change exercise about every three or four workouts. So we, which ones do you usually go to? There's a, we have a million. Yeah? We have, I mean, Good morning. chest supported, you talk talking about upper back, chest supported row, bent over row, dumbbell row, upright row, uh, warbler shrugs, oh, regular good. shrugs, like I said. They just push as hard as they can, and in about, maybe me, in my brain, I don't want to do something more than three times in a row. You go very hard, you won't make any progress, you have to switch. Uh, and you push, always push as hard as you can, so you have to switch about every week, week and a half or two weeks. What exercises do you advocate using cables? Well, we do, well, we have cable machines for the belt squat. We do a lot of cable, uh, good morning. Um, I'm not, uh, I asked Chuck Liverpool, he did thousands of lap pull downs. Mm -hmm. And he had enormous lats, and I said, Chuck, what do you think lap pull downs do for you? He said, nothing, I just like to do them. Mm -hmm. I never got anything ever out of a lap pull down. No. All right, uh, I think it's more cosmetic than anything else. But I do, uh, I always did just did this and end up rolling. Gum shields in training, using mouth guards? No. In training? No. You don't use them? No. They only work on max attempts. Yeah? So, what do, you work on? what do you think they're best for if you were to? Not fighting. Fighting. <laughs> okay, um, best way to lengthen the hip flexors? Ball right here. What's up, Jake? Right. The bent ball. Okay. Stretches it out. That's why we say we do a lot of that ball. Right. Uh, would you use a foam roller for that? I That's think all? foam rollers are worthless. Worthless. <laughs> Okay. Every, everybody rolls around on foam rollers every day, right? Yeah. If they weren't, you could doing it. <laughs> and everybody keeps doing it, so we don't do it. I don't believe in stretching. I believe in going in squat bench or deadlift. Right. I believe in, I believe in stretching later on during the day as, a, on, as its own workout. There's never been a survey to prove that stretching up anything. Okay. Before working out. Neck work for powerlifters, specifically. Neck. Neck, neck work. 
Yes, you must do neck work. You see a lot of guys out there doing neck work, right? But the uh, I think it's the most, uh, most neglected muscle in the body is the neck. You have to train the top of your spine, the bottom of your spine. That's why all football players have so many, uh, in this country, have uh, concussions, they have weak necks. And they're afraid to train the lower back, it's two most essential areas you have to train. So we live on lower back, you see all the reverse hybrids? Um, and you saw the guys doing neck good mornings and that's why. So do you think people should buy the neck harnesses that you can... Sure, it's the cheapest. Yep. Yeah, I mean it costs what? 15 bucks and you can do anything you want with one. Great. Relationship with overhead press at Westside. We do a lot, you do a lot of seated overhead press, a lot of seated. Behind the neck and in front. Kenny Paris is very, very big on that. We all did a lot of super steep neck rock. Real close, yep. real steep. Uh, pause work. How much time is optimal? Pause. Pause on your chest? La or in the hole? We don't do anything. No, yeah. just isometrics. Just, uh, the, the stretch reflex lasts about four seconds, so we don't do anything. Okay. You see, when you sit on the box, you, 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 sit, you did it. You sit on the box, release, and it popped up. There's, that's it. <laughs> okay, deloading for West Side. You do circa max, right? Yep. Okay, how do you do it? <clears throat> 28 days out, for, you know, that, our squat is everything. If our squat goes up, all the lifts goes up. So 28 days out, we train to 50% on the squat day. Uh, and you know, decent amount of system work. 21 days out, we take an all-time record on the box. Like Wesley jumped 20 pounds. He had 855 squat before his last meet, and he did um, he did 515. He did 835. I mean, I'm sorry, 535 of weight and 375 of band. He went from 855 squat to 900 easy. Yep. All right. Then 14 days out, they use 75 percent of what they squat. 21 days out, like the, like AJ Roberts, the guy like this here. AJ made. Um, 740 and 440 band. 14 days out, he did 510 in just briefs with 440 band. Then he, the big guys don't do many barbell exercises. Seven days out, just assist the work, and then we go to meet. The little guys, like it's your body weight, you do a few light squats, but you live on your system, never get off the zoom. And the last heavy bench you do is floor press, right? 10 days out. Is that, would you do that only for equipped or for raw as well? Because you use more. I mean, yeah, I mean, we're equipped, we do it, you know, we do it wrong. Yeah. Because it's everybody's universal sticking point. And you bring mm -hmm. that record. Like, this, the, my 165, when he came, he had a 515 bench. He had a 324 press. Um, the last meet, he bets 590, and he, uh, 590, he went up 65, 75 pounds, and he had a uh, 374 press. So he went up 50, and his bench went up 75. That's, just, that's a common example. Uh, eating during training. Do you do it? No. Uh, best supplements? I think it's just do protein and vitamins and minerals. I'm not, you know, I'm not big into supplements. I'm no. big into training. Right. Dave Bulldog BT, from a uh, famous lifter from UK, asks if they're... So you say that Westside works for both raw and equipped, but if there were any alterations for uh, more efficient West side for raw lifters, what would they be? Okay, for the bench, we we do a lot of this. Six sets of, instead of speed day, we do six sets of six. Like and, and then each week they add, they add weight for three or four weeks until they can't make six sets of six. Then they go down to eight sets of eight. So the weight goes back down with the boys. So you go from 36 reps to 64 reps. All right. So the weight's down. You work your way back up again. When you can't make eight sets, you know eight sets eight is real hard. Uh, you go back to ten sets of ten. Now we go 100 reps in a work, one workout, so Saturday morning, very fast, back to back. Um, then when you stall out there, you go back six sets of six. And it's taking a little girl from a, a 195 bench to um, a 300 bench. Okay. All right, actually in the contest, 195 to 285 in the meet, 123, in about nine months. And another girl from 190 to, to 290 in, 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 in around six months. But the guys that go too, like Wesley. Yeah. Put a lot of muscles on you. I got this at Bill Cino years ago. So over here in America, he won a best chess in six Mr. America contest. I took all, and we do them ultra wide, and did a lot of tricep work. And I, I, I took the tricep work from Larry Pacifico and the ultra wide benches from Bill Cino, and I combined them. And it, it, it took my raw bench to 340 to 515. Okay. Um, he also asks if there's more than one way to skin a cat since lots of top lifters don't touch west side such as Andy Bolton and the Lily Bridges. 
Oh, what's Andy Bolton bench? I don't have the number here right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very much. Andy's a great deadlifter. People have to look at body structures. I mean, my boy pulls 900, he only benches 580. Mm -hmm. Just like Andy Bolton. And then, um, but we have people, you gotta realize, this gym has 24 people over 800, four over nine. No gym has that. You know, when I ever asked who does Andy Bolton train with, no one knows. He trains with my friend Jay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's only one Andy Bolton, is what I'm trying right. to say. Yeah, you know, it could be Andy Bolton, not about the method. Yeah. Uh, here in our gym, we don't do raw, but we have a, a 905 raw squat. I have a 260 pounder raw squat, 855 in the meat. Uh, in the bench, Nick Winter's been 700. You only got credit for 650 in the meat. Mm -hmm. We have two 650s, a 230, um, a 550, 198 raw, and so, uh, and then a deadlift, a 915 raw deadlift. Uh, Contest wise. Bulldog's a famous squatter from back home. He's got a world record above Masters uh, M1, I think. He squats 380 at 50 years old. He raw benches 210, and he, but he says he has an awful deadlift due to body shape and injury. He wants to squat 410 kilograms. What can he do? Well, I would have to see him train, but watching you, your glutes and hamstrings got to be a lot stronger. You've got very strong legs, so you lower yourself straight down. You never put yourself in an advantageous position in the bottom to come up. So if you was in this gym, like the bell squats, we, see how fast that kills you? See, that shows your weaknesses. We find your weaknesses and make it strong and bring you up. Yeah. So it's all about the, uh, lots of heavy reverse hybrids, lots of bell squat, lots of in, uh, hamstring work. And bring up all those weaknesses is all we do. Okay. Um, Lawrence Farncombe, that's the Team GB coach uh, for the IPF, he, he wants to know what the most important thing you know now that you wished you'd known uh, as, so as a coach or lifter. Weight periodization. All of our weights are designed to make us faster or maximal strength. We break our max effort record on Monday and Wednesday over 90% of the time as a, at the entire gym. So that's why this gym is so strong. 83 over 800 in the squat. All right, we have around 25 over 1,000. 25 people can squat over 1,000. Okay, so what is it about weight periodization that you think is critical? Because we only train at weights that make you strong, 75 to 85 percent. If you look at the Chinese weightlifters are ruling the world, their average strength weight's 80 percent. So okay. is ours. Yep. See, it's 80s in between 75 and 85. So we, we use optimal weights all the time. We don't use any weight. There's no good to do tens in H and say it does no good. And a lot of the inspiration came from prelims chart. Absolutely. And Chinese and Soviets. Yes, and if you want, Perlman's chart was designed, the reason he had that chart is because if you did more reps than he said, the barbell slowed down. And if you did more uh, total lifts, then the barbell would slow down your formant rate. That's why we live on the spatial exercises. A, 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 a spatial exercise does not matter if you break form. It has nothing to do with it.